Hi, welcome back. Today we're talking about wheels. I'm not a fan of these original wheels that are on the Series 3. I think they look too small and like a little clown car. And I don't want to go too big either and make it look like a big Tonka truck toy thing. I think that looks ridiculous as well. Plus I'm fighting against budget. So, I came up with a plan. I went onto Facebook Marketplace and found a set of four used but in decent condition and more importantly matching BF Goodrich mud terrain tires. They were only a hundred bucks and had a lot of life left in them and I thought it might look nice to have a bit more of an aggressive looking tire. The current tires were a collection of mismatched all terrains in a 205 width while the new slash old mud terrains were slightly wider at a 225 width. I wanted a slightly taller, slightly wider profile tire so it looked bigger on the rim and filled the wheel arches a bit more, giving it a slightly passive aggressive stance and just a hint more road presence without being too showy. I'm going to load these tires up, I'm going to head over to my nearest sort of tire fitment place and I'm going to get them swapped onto these original wheels. has a tailgate now. Alright, so because I've been working on Yui for the last however many weeks, he hasn't been started in a very long time, so Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I don't get to drive Yui often. In fact, I've only put about 11 miles on it since owning it. But when I do, I can't help but smile. Now, what a day to go for a drive in this. It's a simple pleasure, just a raw driving experience. No power steering and only four forward gears topping out at 50 miles an hour. It's a powerful throwback to a simpler time and I'm beginning to think nostalgia is my favorite emotion. There we are. I didn't have the tools or the patience to deal with swapping over the tires especially since they still had inner tubes in them. But after 30 minutes and 125 pounds, they were balanced and done. Now that I'm back from the tire store, and I've had these wheels swapped up, or the tires swapped over, I'm not sure it's achieved what I was hoping for. The wheels look just as small. And the other thing as well, of course, is that they're really tatty. So I need to take them off again, sand them down, spray them up and put them back on before I can get a real sense of what they're going to look like. I figured I would do two at a time and start with the rear since I had a couple of axle stands but as always I got distracted with a different job. I think this is a good opportunity for me to get in here and do some wire brushing. I guess I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I simply put a newly refurbed wheel back onto a crusty hub. I thought that since I don't have the luxury of stripping the vehicle down completely, I'll at least tidy up where I see an issue. I wanted to get rid of any crusty bits and give it a blast of Rust-Oleum paint to provide a barrier to the elements. But as with any exploratory surgery on a 50 year old Land Rover, you inevitably find more problems. In this case, a small hole in the chassis near the exhaust. This is why you should never take someone's word for it when they say, oh yeah, mate, chassis solid, everything's solid, bulkhead solid. I'm just looking for someone to blame because this is really frustrating. I love these cars, but I absolutely hate dealing with rust and corrosion. I hate it. But it's a problem I have and a problem I need to fix. But for now, those wheels over there need to be sanded back and given a coat of the new paint that's going on. I feel like this vehicle is going to be on axle stands for a little while. 
Let me make a start on those wheels. But I'm just gonna have a quick lie down here for a bit. Oh, yeah. The world doesn't seem so bad when you just lie down and look at nothing but blue. So after taking a moment to regroup and consider the task ahead, I blasted the rear of the truck and the wheels to get rid of loose flaky bits and deeply embedded dirt and grime. The wheels were in a sorry state and had seemingly been painted a few times before but I was going to take my time and do it properly. Yeah, I'm literally bored already. I'm bored already. But knowing that the only alternative was to buy new wheels or pay someone else to do it, I resigned myself to the fact that this is on me and I needed to quit whining and crack on. And I know what you're thinking, oh why don't you just wire brush it and I tried that on the back of one of the wheels as a bit of a test and the wire brush just gouges stripes out of it and you've got to sand it flat anyway because it just looks awful. The only thing with a wire brush is you have to take all the paint off until the bare metal and I do not have eight years to do that. But this is almost ready. I just need to mask off the tire with a little bit of masking tape and some like plastic and then I can get the first coat on this. Alright, I'm going to do edges up against the rim, masking tape, stick it down to the tire, then plastic over the top, cut the middle out, re-tape it onto the tape, and that should give me a good mask. Yep, pure science, folks. I wanted to show the whole process in case someone watching was thinking about doing it themselves. There's no quick solution with this if you want a good result. It needs to be sanded smooth, all the dust removed, and even wiped down with an isopropyl cloth. I've seen some people paint their wheels by wedging a deck of playing cards between the rim and the tire, and I'm not sure about that. I always find painting a bit high risk, and I want to minimize any overspray, especially when it blows towards your wife's car. I'm sure it'll buff out. The trick is to try not put too much paint on at once. You sort of just keep tickling it with a light dusting until the coat fills in. It's so tempting to just keep going and going and going. But I think I have to let that first layer harden up a little bit before I put a second coat on because I basically I don't want to do any more sanding and if it runs I've got to sand it. So I'm going to exercise some self-control. I'm going to leave it to dry for a bit. Okay, it's been about eight minutes and I'm bored. So I'm going to put another coat on. Now I genuinely have to let that dry now, probably overnight. But anyway, I'm chuffed though. It looks pretty good for a little bit of rubbing and spraying. It's quite shiny because it's wet now, but it's going to go all satiny egg shelly when it's dry. And I think that's going to look really, really good. I must say, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. This paint is really forgiving. But I still hadn't satiated my painting hunger for the day, so I attacked Yui's undercarriage with some satin black Rust-Oleum paint. After the paint had dried, my curiosity got the better of me, and I wanted to see what the wheel would look like on the vehicle. And this is where things took a turn south. And I must warn you, if you're squeamish, then look away. Okay, I'll spare you a few gory details. My thumb is still attached, but it's two weeks later now, and that's what this big delay was all about. It basically, the wheel landed on my thumb and sort of scraped most of it off, and I had to just squish it back on. It's healed up nicely, so we're back at it today with the sun shining, but I'm still in the same place I was two weeks ago so what i need to do right now is the wheels that i've painted these rear wheels 
are done and dried but I want to put wheel spaces on here 30 mil aluminium wheel spaces straight on here to bring the wheels out a little bit into the corners and I think it will make a really 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 nice difference it's not going to be used for hardcore off-roading and things like that so I'm not worried about that this is a light use vehicle I'm trying a reversible solution you can always take the wheel spacer off whoever wants to own this next I'm not committing to 2,000 pounds worth of new wheels and tires and I'm trying to see if I can get this look I'm going for and then everything will be okay. In order to fasten the wheel spacer onto the hub, I needed to attach a wheel on the opposite side to have something to tighten against. Take two, fingers out the way. This is because of the way the diff works. If I try to fix the spacer on the right side hub, the left one will spin in the opposite direction. By attaching a wheel and lowering it down, it stops the diff from rotating. Okay, a little bit of information on this wheel spacer. It's a 30 mil aluminium wheel spacer. It's not shims, so it sort of stacks behind your wheel. It offers new studs for your wheel. So these attach to the existing studs and your wheel goes up against these. They were, if I'm not mistaken, 90 pounds from eBay. They're called Bulldog, Bulldog spacers. And they go straight on. And I think it advises a bit of thread lock. And if you're wanting to know, it's a 27 mil socket. From what I can tell, the socket helps sort of centralize it as well. And I'm just doing a little bit at a time, a little bit sort of cross pattern, just to make sure that it seats really central. You don't want to be driving down the highway and your wheels going wim, 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 wim. Okay. 195. 195 Newton meters is quite a bit. And without the other wheel touching the ground, there's no way I'd be able to apply that sort of torque. The right side rear was almost done, and I was 25% closer to completing this part of the project. But next up was the other side, and this meant lowering the right, raising up the left side, removing the wheel, installing the spacer, and refitting the rear left side. Okay, halfway there. Now, the front. And because it's pretty much the same job, I thought I'd cue the music and we can montage our way through it. Well, there we are. Finally, we've reached the end of one of the longest bits of transformation for this series. Sanding and scrubbing and painting five wheels. I'm not in a hurry to do that again anytime soon, but it's done now. And I feel like the vehicle looks amazing with a fresh coat of paint. Heirloom White from Rust-Oleum, Painter's Touch Heirloom White worked brilliantly it gave a really nice smooth finish once it was dry like a satiny kind of look which i think looks great i hate gloss and i think matte just tracks dirt so this sort of satin finish is perfect in my opinion and with the wheel spaces behind it's pushed the, the wheels out into the corners and given the vehicle a really nice line i think it looks so much better than the original wheels which kind of sat in under the body and made it look a little bit goofy clown car-ish and I didn't want to pack the wheels right out so that they you know, sticking out like a big old monster truck I think that looks silly as well this way it's sort of in proportion and I think it just looks great but we're not there yet there's a few more things to still do there's oil leaks there's the bulkhead there's some holes that need to be sorted out and welded and the more I'm ticking off the top 
the more items are going on the bottom of the list but we will eventually get there thank you for watching this far if you have please do consider subscribing if you want to comment and share your ideas one of the comments was what about doing a ragtop conversion i 100 percent agree with that i think this could be a, a lovely ragtop conversion anyway moving on thank you again for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye.